Well, welcome back to another edition of 42nd Street Pete, Summer, Summer of Sleeves Grindhouse Special Edition, or whatever the fuck we're doing here. I'll tell you something. Summer Slam is in Cleveland this weekend. Um, I'm taping this today, obviously. Um, Drew McIntyre and Bailey, whoever the hell they are, are appearing at the wing stop around the corner from me. And there is a line. The parking lot has been full since 9 o'clock this morning. There is a line around, almost up to my house. That's how long the fucking line is, all right? And this has been going on since like 9.30 or something like that. The wrestlers aren't supposed to be there all noon. It's already disgusting out there. And I'm like, man, I mean, I'm an old school fan from way back, but I would never, ever stand out in this heat to meet anybody. So, that being said, um... Someone brought up Vic Morrow, and I guess we're close to the anniversary of uh, that tragic fucking incident with the Twilight Zone. So, let's pick a Vic movie from 1980, Humanoids from the Deep, starring Vic Morrow, and Turkle, and Doug McClure. And to me, this was almost like a revision of Horror of Party Beach, because in that one... They had dumped radioactive waste overboard onto a sunken graveyard ship and corpses were reanimated and came up and attacked people and drank their blood. This one has something else with some kind of uh, genetically spawned salmon getting out and doing something and turning into these half-human, half-fish people that basically do what everybody suspected monsters did. They dragged chicks off and raped them. And... This one gets pretty gory thanks to the special effects of Rob Bottin. There are faces ripped off, backs ripped open, heads ripped off, and these big, nasty, slimy things just keep pulling chicks under the water. Um, Vic is, I think his name was Slocum in this, no, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, he's this Indian-hating racist who blames the Indians on what's going on. Um, and he's also almost killed by one of the monsters. Uh, there's a big, huge invasion of the monsters at this carnival thing where basically they're attacking and killing just about everybody. Monsters are being set on fire. Their heads are being bashed in. All kinds of blood and gore. And then it ends with the one main chick that got raped by the monsters giving birth to one at the end of the movie. Like, sort of like the alien thing where it pops out of her belly and shit. So, yeah, and I made the mistake of taking my uh, ex-wife to this thing, and it, basically she got up and started walking out in the middle of it. So I had to go back the next night with a friend of mine and finish watching it. So that was that. As far as Vic Morrow, man, I remember when I was a kid, there was this TV show called Combat. It was a World War II thing. It was, you know, episodical. It was supposed to be Vic Morrow as Sergeant Chip Saunders and Rick Jason as his lieutenant. And what was supposed to happen was each week was going to be an episode, one with Chip, one with the lieutenant. Well, the, the Chip character proved so popular that it just became more of him and less of the other one. And that show went on for quite a while, and we all, you know, sort of idolized, you know, Sergeant Chip Saunders. And we used to do that. I don't know if anybody does this anymore, but you remember the farting under the armpit deal? Well... We were in school, we were doing, I can't do it, but we would walk down the thing humming the, the combat jingle, going, <laughs> so you get the idea. So anyway, after combat, Vic's career sort of stalled out a little bit. I mean, he was in, uh, I think that TV movie, the Truman Cody movie, The Glass House, about the prison, and he was this, you know, nasty fucking prisoner who was raping the younger guys and stuff like that, and Alan Alda tried to stop him. Um, Vic starred in a whole bunch of low-budget stuff. The Victors, uh, Crazy Larry and Dirty Mary, um, damn, a whole bunch of stuff. It was sort of, um, like he got typecast. I mean, you know, let, let's face it, you know, Vic wasn't going to be a leading man. He was a heavy. He looked like a heavy. He had, you know, he had the mannerisms of a heavy. And, you know, he could play, you know, racially, you know, offensive characters with the drop of a hat. He could play a bad guy with the drop of a hat. Um, it seemed like he was having a problem with alcohol and things like that before he got the gig at the Twilight Zone. And again, in the Twilight Zone episode, he sort of played another racist. 
But, you know, what really sucks is that whole helicopter accident where he basically tried to save those two kids and the whole helicopter came crashing down on him. And it sucks because, like I said, I honestly think Vic was a good actor. I, I think he was overlooked because I think he was trying to push himself as a lead. But you know something? When you think of Richard Widmark, you don't think of what a great actor he was. You just think of the scene in Ki uh, Kiss of Death where he pushed the old lady in the wheelchair down the stairs. When you think of Jack Palance, you don't think of Jack as Curly from uh, whatever that Billy Crystal was. Uh, Cal I don't know. Uh, God, I can't remember that one. But I remember Jack Palance as the guy who blew El Elijah Cook out of his boots and chain. So the thing is, you know, a lot of heavies you know, in the 50s became leading men in the 60s and 70s. Vic, for some reason, didn't. It's sort of like another thing where, you know, John Davis Chandler played played one lead in his life, but was, you know, regulated to playing heavies, which he was good at. So my thing is, if you're really good at something, stick with it, even though a lot of guys, you know, like Sid Haig, Lee Van Cleef, and others got pissed at being typecast and dropped out of acting for a while. But... It's just the same the way it went down with Vic, and uh, it's tragic that, you know, the guy was trying to put his life together only to have it snuffed out during uh, the Twilight Zone thing. So, uh, that's our show for today. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for tuning in. Book is still available. Let me pick one up and shamelessly shill it, and I thank the people that have, you know, bought one so far. I hope you enjoy it, and that's all I got for today, so stay safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.